G'day, g'day, comrade subscribers. I thought we'd take a quick look at this. East German machine again. Uh, KC87, Klein Computer 87 from 1987, Z80 based. So if you remember, the issue we've got, it's a Z80 based machine. The issue we've got at the moment is that the power supply there's an issue with the power supply. So let's get the machine out of the way quickly. So I have been tinkering with the power supply. I've not published a video about it. Nothing interesting to look at. But basically the way it works, according to the schematic as well, actually let me get the rest of it out. Right, so this is the mains filter the nets nets filter no issue with that uh, but essentially the way it seems to work is that we've got the rectification on this small board here um, so we've got the four diodes so we actually send a DC supply to this main board here so effectively it's like 240 volts DC if you know what I mean obviously there's no smoothing so you know what I mean it's, it's DC going to the actual board we do have AC connected here but just for we've got a pair of kind of uh, filters I think as well but I think the main most of it is done is is done a DC so it's a switching power supply I have tried putting 30 volts into it um, but that hasn't triggered any any problems because I keep blowing half amp fuses and I, I can't really afford to keep buying fuses to test it so um, yeah I've not been able to test it any further but I know people say oh, okay well what about just having a look what component gets hot problem is the fuse blows straight away so nothing gets hot um, like I said I did try my my bench power supply you know current limited but it wasn't drawing anything. Um, obviously, the circuit is expecting 220 volts DC-ish. I know someone's going to correct me, so it's not actually 220 volts because it's a half sign, whatever. So I'm not going to worry about this. Um, it's the interesting, th interesting thing about the computer. Now, I'll put all this away. Right, this is a bit better. <clears throat> so the interesting thing about this machine is that it actually... Well, I don't know if it actually requires it, but it's got plus minus 12 volts, plus minus 5 volts, um, which is unusual for a Z80. I know, like the spec here, the, like the the RAM that the spec here used, I think required 12 volts and plus minus 5 volts or something like that. But generally, um, the Soviet era machines used KR565 um, uh, DRAMs, which are plus 5 volts only. So I think one speculation is that it requires negative 5 volts perhaps for the op amp for the cassette interface. Um, what the negative 12 volts is for? No idea. There is a, I think there is a serial interface, but I don't think it really... Yeah. Anyway, so what, what am I going to do? So I've got some finally got some five pinned in sockets so that I can use my meanwhile power supplies so my meanwhile power supply will give plus minus five volts and 12 volts so I'll be missing negative 12 volts but hopefully that's enough to see if the machine actually works um, you can see there's a lot of a lot of wires what um, wire wrap actually and it looks like the what the majority of them are are basically what we would use in the West, um, um, like those uh, little strapping things. Let me show you. So, whereas in the West, we would just use something like that on the pin header. Um, what they've got here is um, these wire wrap connections everywhere. So, I have seen it on... Um, I think it was the KC85 slash three, but they didn't use wire. They just basically pushed the um, pushed the two legs together and then sold them, soldered them. So um, yeah, I'm not too keen on this because it's a bit. Anyway, whatever. That seems to be what most of it is there for. 
that's the Z80 clone. Anyway, let's um, let's build up this power supply thing for the mean well. And um, well, the other thing is trying to get video out because obviously, again, we've got an RF modulator here, and that's the RF modulated output there. So um, uh, apparently, there is a version of this that actually has an RGB color module, uh, which in which case one of these would be used but this doesn't have it um which is doesn't matter but i think when i was looking at this before i think maybe this is where the baseband video signal comes into the rf modulator so i think hopefully i can maybe pick up a baseband video signal there but let's um let's see no, don't worry it's not going to be a another cable making video but um, there we go just use the uh, I'm going to use color coded um, heat shrink but um, we've got ground plus volt uh, plus 5 minus 5 and plus 12 volts so I don't I don't like using these I um, I usually just use glued heat shrink I always find that a bit better but maybe no I think I use glued heat shrink Let's see. All right, we've got three out of the four voltages, so we don't have negative uh, twelve. So we'll have a look. So CPU's there. I have. I've just given a quick test. The CPU is getting warm, and I think the video signal's coming out of there. So let's check. Okay. So let's check. Let's check the video signal. So I think it should be this. That could be promising. Be very careful. Ooh. Um, looking at the at the eighty six RK, which is also a black and white signal. So this should be black and white. This could be possible. So this is. Half a millivolt. That's two volts. What do you reckon? That looks like horizontal vertical retraces. And that looks like scanline data. Doesn't it? We might have a video signal that we can use. Cool. All right. Okay. Um, shall I, I'll, take, I'll take a screenshot of that shot. Oh. There we go. And where's the trigger? Let's move the trigger up. There. All right. Can I move it? No, I don't want to move it there. I'll move it along this way. There we go. So we can see more of the scan line data. Okay. I'll take a screenshot okay all right so we might have video output let's have a look at the well okay i was gonna have a look at the cpu but if we've got video output i think the next step is to see if we can get video output all right so for this i'm just going to use my very simple Alligator clips, clip on there, plug this into my yo 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 screen and just see if we get some sort of output. All right, so there we go. We ready? Power on. Oh, hey. oh, oh. <laughs> cool. It works. Robotron Z9001. Brilliant. Okay, excellent. So it's working. So I'm not sure if we need all these voltages, but it's working with them. And that seems to be the video output signal there. So now I need to... Sorry, get that light out of the way. Cool. All right, I don't know if the keyboard's working. Um, my wife wants to go and wash her car <laughs> and, um, and go to the shops to get some dinner. So I might leave a nice quick video. So the KC87 is working. I'm surprised. Now I just need to figure out what I'm going to do about the power supply. So I reckon replace 
replace it with something. I could either just stick a DIN socket on and plug this in, or I could get like a Meanwell um, cage supply to put in the, the machine itself. Oh, I'm really, I'm really happy. That's nice. Okay. Um, let me know what I should do. Until next time. Bye for now. Okay, actually before I go, I thought I'd give it one more go. I'll hook up the keyboard. So I'm going to have to hold the keyboard so I don't, I've got nowhere to rest it. So yeah, I need to sort out the power supply in the video. Then I can put it all back into its case. So I'll just, um, so I'll plug that in there. Start recording on the computer. And power on. Okay, power LED. Screen's gone blank. Yep. Okay, Ooh, graphic LED works. Uh, okay. Cool, keyboard works. Start, whoops, <laughs> start tape. What about reset? All right, do I have to do shift reset or something? Oh, there we go. Okay. Start tape. Okay. <laughs> cool. All right, I'm happy. You happy? I'm happy. Um, uh, I'm very happy. That's uh, that's working nicely. Okay. Um, need to sort out what I'm going to do with the power. But yeah. Bye for now. Thank you.